Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? I've been holding these uh, few videos off for a little while, so on this day of recording, which is, of course, uh, November 27th, here we are. I'm doing things again. I'm going to start this day off with one video. I'll have more today, but the first one is... I had an idea. Now... A lot of people have mentioned it, and Sony has dipped their hands into it a little bit, but never took off. And that is... Linux. Now, hear me out. The PlayStation 4 is based on FreeBSD, and they do use their own proprietary graphics APIs, that of which being GNM, a low level, and a high level being GNMX. All of which are proprietary graphics APIs. And they have familiarities and similarities to DirectX 3D. But due to its Unix-like architecture, there are reasons why games ported from the PlayStation to Windows don't really run all that well. And even those on Wine run better on Linux, especially Wine and Proton. Now, some people have talked about them bringing back the OtherOS initiative. Originally, OtherOS was its ability to actually run a separate operating system on your PlayStation. There's even a little photo here of a cluster, I assume. Well, first of all, they're, they're running XFCE, so... I'm willing to bet that that's a situation, though, where they have one um, master system and multiple uh, slave systems. Like, it's drawing in all their RAM and all that. Well, not really drawing in, we're like utilizing that over connections. I don't know. Who knows how this one was set up. But, doesn't really matter, right? Anyway, there's also PSX Linux and stuff like that that have existed. The reason why I think that Sony should go back into Linux, I'm not talking about making the PS4 Linux based, I'm not. I'm talking about the PC market. So, we do know that Sony makes, of course, the PlayStation, right? But they have, if I recall correctly, they do still make, um, they do, indeed, still make many devices. They have the Vevo, or how the hell you pronounce it, laptops, which, of course, come with an operating system. And what OS is that? Well, my friends, let's take a look at what OS that might be. As we see here, we have this Dell, this Acer. We're not finding it. So, look at Sony laptops. Ooh, that's Amazon, but that's all old stuff. The majority of this is old, and oh no, oh no, would you look at that. It's dead. Would you just look at that. So the thing here I'm trying to point out is that Sony needs to try dipping their hands back into the PC market. Now, not just in old laptops, not just in some desktop systems. I'm talking about Linux gaming PC. I know, it's not like a Fortnite kid, but gaming PC with Linux. They should consider making their own distro. Something perhaps... Debian based, Ubuntu based even, something that will work pretty easily, will be cross college about everything as well. And overall, whether or not they release it under the GPL or not, I'm not concerned about, because it is the effect that I'm concerned about. Getting a lot of PlayStation games ported over to PC for Linux, and perhaps Sony making their games on PC exclusive to Linux, although 
chances are that won't happen, but it gives a much bigger area of competition. And I'm not a Sony fanboy. The only PlayStation I really have is a broken PS1 and a uh, decently functioning PS2 Slim over here that I can't install Linux on, unfortunately, because no hard disk drive slot in the back. But if they were to invest in trying it out again, right now is the best time to do it and to make it Linux based. Because there are companies like System76 and Pine64 that never really. Well, they're taking off decently, I guess. There's also um, Framework. Many companies are distributing Linux laptops and desktops. There's Lenovo and Hewlett Packard, even, and Dell. But it's not quite enough. You need a super competitive. Um, type of statute there and one of those is Sony because most of these companies besides Pine64 and System76 they're exclusively Linux however they don't really see that much everyone else they will happily give you Windows reason being it's just a thing people use well that is a Microsoft operating system. And who is a big competitor against Microsoft? Take a guess. It is, of course, Sony. That is, of course, in the console market. And this is an area they could take. And I guess I've kind of given up on the whole philosophy that we need to overtake Windows in the market share because. At this point, that is a zero-sum game, and I heavily doubt that we'll ever be able to do that. But being able to compete with them is something. Overtaking Apple's market share is easy. It would be so easy just to take out Apple and call it a day. Once we got that, we are considered competitive even if we are below 20%. Apple is considered competitive. Wonder why? They look pretty. Simple as that. Now, of course, one thing with the PS5, they're not really doing. You see, PS5, I try to type in PS5 system, and I'm not really finding much of anything. There is this, but there really just isn't a lot of information about this. Uh, we do know that it has 4K support, of course, and dynamic resolution. However, based off what we know, we can assume that it's not really uh, anything majorly different from the PS4. I probably should have had this up here to begin with. But it's not, um, software-wise, it's not that different from the PS4. And of course, I think that, well, if they were to try to get into this market, perhaps, one, they should release those APIs to Linux. Perhaps even put them under an open source, or better, a Libre software license. But even not that, their APIs generally aren't as good as something like the AMD and Kronos Group Vulkan API, which has proven to be a great competitor even against Microsoft DirectX. And is... It's everywhere. It's even in phones. And even Apple has given into it. And BSD has full compatibility to Vulkan, because there is a Vulkan API driver for BSD even. Which makes it... more easier than ever. OpenGL, well, I know for a f everyone knows for a fact OpenGL, it works everywhere. It works on your grandma's old Windows, fuck, not even Windows, her old DOS PC and her and your granddad's old Unix mainframe. All right, it works everywhere. OpenGL is from 1991. All right, same time around the around the time that Linux showed up and said, "I'm here, I exist, 
Maybe competitive. Maybe not. Oh, hi, IBM. It's about that, around that same time. Kronos Group is proving to be a very tough competitor against Microsoft's DirectX. And while they're not necessarily, I guess, from the competitors, isn't really anything good to say anymore because they're not really clashing and competing, but it gives people more options of graphics APIs and it opens up a massive gateway for gaming on Linux. That is, of course, based off of AMD's old proprietary Mantle API, which, oh, died off, and is now Vulkan. Now, of course, there was an old thing called Linux for the PS2. It was this sort of OS that ran with the um, beautiful old Window Maker. And as you can see, Window Maker back there, connect to a VGA monitor. Using your PlayStation 2 Fat Boy as, well, as you can see, as a Linux desktop system. And hey, it works perfectly fine. And it's not really um, active nowadays, of course. So there's also a PSX Linux, Runix, as it was also called. Uh, it appears to have been a, yeah. For beta, the Runix sources support multiple or single memory cards of PS... Oops, okay. Well, that's not really important. But there is one thing we have to remember is that the thing with uh, the PS3, with them having their multiple OS support, that they dropped that. Your ability to just run an OS on Linux all you wanted. Now, oh, sorry, run a Linux OS or any other OS on the PS3 as you want, I mean. Well, as we are seeing with newer developments in Linux gaming, Linux is worth taking a look into for a competitive game. And, well, I, I don't really see anti-cheats going anywhere. But you don't necessarily need to run everything as admin, or in Linux case, root privileges. And I don't really give anything root privileges on my system. Because that makes sense. Windows users have become desensitized to the whole run as admin. They just go, oh, my, uh, my image viewer needs to run as the administrator? Hmm. That's normal. It's not. It's not normal, but they would fall for that anyway, wouldn't they? Reason being, it's just asking for admin. It's not that bad. Not that bad, right? I, I heavily doubt it's actually that bad. It actually is. It's horrible. So, there's that. There's my two cents on a long, drawn-out argument that has gotten even bigger ever since Vulcan and way bigger ever since Proton. So, that must be sense in the issue. They could do that, start distributing those. And, we can see how it goes. But, well, it's just me saying they should do that. I'm nobody. But hey, maybe one day we'll take off. I'll see you in the next one. Have a rest of your day.